is Jennifer Esteen. I'm a registered nurse here today. I'm with the bargaining team. And we are here today to tell the city of San Francisco to keep investing in its patients, keep investing in the hospital. Right now, the hospital is running at 137% every single day, which means it's filled over capacity. At the same time, the budget doesn't allow for over capacity. And so that means that in order to staff the hospital and take care of people, you're either running short staffed every day, which is most days in most units, or the city has to pay temporary workers, contract workers to come in from outside and do the job that they could easily budget for and accommodate for the patients who are showing up. This is a level one trauma center, the only one in San Francisco, the city's safety net hospital, and patients should be able to arrive and have good care every day from nurses who are working here, social workers who are here, full-time and permanent every single day for consistency in care, which is proven by research to be the best care possible. And the city is outsourcing hundreds of millions of dollars, exactly. clinical care, all kinds of services that could be done by city workers. What's going on? It's a big problem. Last year alone, there were one million hours worked by temporary nurses. One million hours is a huge portion of the full-time nursing need. So we want to tell the city that enough is enough. Do the right thing and make a budget that meets the needs of the people. Make a budget that staffs the hospital appropriately every day, not running and scrambling and figuring out how to play, fill holes. Budget appropriately for patient care. And the mayor, London Breed, has cut the budget 3% this year, 3% next year. What does that say to the workers who are overworked or stressed out from understaffing? It says a lot to the workers, but it also speaks volumes to the people here who live here in San Francisco. It means that London Breed thinks that she has to choose between taking care of citizens and taking care of citizens. She thinks that it's a choice, but it's not. In order to provide for the people, you have to take care of the people. And cutting the budget is not the way to do it, especially when there's educational fund money coming in boondoggles. You got money coming from IPO valuations, you're going to make people rich enough to buy every house in the city, but the budget is cut to provide services to the same people? London the richest city in the world. And, you know. Yeah, we got to make better choices. Objection. So when the hospital understaffs us and they put the patients at risk for their safety, we fill out an assignment despite objection. So this is the, the union's way of documenting how the nurses are short-staffed. How are they short-staffed? How much... Uh... Um, a significant amount. We moved into this hospital a few years ago, but the problem is that soon after we moved in, that the hospital would figure out how many nurses we needed, and that hasn't happened. So we're here to ask that the hospital make their promises, complete their promises, and give us the staff that we need to safely take care of our patients, which is our priority, of course, as nurses. What's your name? Diana. They spend a lot of money in the hospital. Why can't they provide for proper staffing? That's exactly what, we're, what, what we'd like to know. We know the number of nurses we need and that they just will not fulfill that promise. It's, you know, it's a patient safety issue for us. And the people of San Francisco need to know that we're being made to work short-staffed on a very regular basis. And there was a couple of patients that have gone missing, uh, and dis you know, have died. Is that a result of short-staffing? Well, it certainly makes it um, hard for us to keep track of the patients when there's not enough of us to go around. And it isn't our fault. Yeah. Hey, do they get blamed? Do they blame the nursing staff? Um, very often we get blamed for things that go wrong when we're, we're working. We can only work so hard. We can only move so fast. You're stressed out as it is. <laughs> That's right. It's a hard job. We're happy, we're happy to work for the hospital, but they got to step up to the plate. Oh, this is, this is a small fraction of the ones that get filled out a pretty much on a daily basis. So, it, um, yeah, just a, a visual representation to let the people know that it's not okay to, for us to keep working in these conditions. And how long have you worked at the hospital? 32 years. Long time. It is. 
You're a survivor. I am a survivor because I love to take care of the patients here. My name is Annette Yeagers and I work for uh, on the med surge floor here. And uh, we are here rallying for nurses and the working conditions um, and safety for our patients. Primarily it's safety because we find that many times we're understaffed for break coverage. Isn't there a state law as far as coverage? There is and we've been fighting that. We don't always have sufficient nurses to cover and it becomes a, a budget issue. The hospital is a new facility and has two units that were supposed to be temporary but now our budget are pretty much one is definitely open full-time the other one is more part-time so we have a budgeting problem that we don't have sufficient staff to run the new hospital and that's our biggest concern is that we don't have sufficient staff numbers and yes uh, the hospital is at times not complying with Title 22. Is that dangerous to the patients? Yes it is. Um, what we find is that nurses are working we all work here 12-hour shifts and without sufficient coverage we're going either missing a break or we're out of ratio so instead of having four patients we would have eight during that period of time. And they spent a lot of money in this hospital. Yes they did. Nearly a billion dollars and Zuckerberg gave 75 million. Why can't they have find the money for staffing? I mean, San Francisco's got a lot of money coming in. You're absolutely correct, and this is our, our question as well. There uh, appears to be a lot of money. We're using a lot of uh, nurses that are not permanent. And Temporary per diem? Yes. And, and how does that affect nursing? Well, it, it affects nursing in that it's a uh, these people are not necessarily vested with our facility. So they may work part-time at several different facilities, um, and so th they, they don't have a... Um, the, the permanent people, we feel a, um, a tight connection and are very tight with our, our community. Our patients do have special needs. So better care of the patients better if you care. have permanent people. Yes, absolutely better care. Um, and as well, the, the, um, the issue becomes um, that it's a huge cost to the city. I think you mentioned that. So we feel that we need to have better staffing and, and the city um, needs to look at the budget because a lot of money could be for the permanent staff and is going to nurses that are not permanent and uh, are not paying into our pension fund either. Are you concerned about outsourcing and privatization? Well, I think the, uh, the issue of temporary exempt is almost a form of that, so yes, it is. Um, and we also, uh, also without, with, since they're not hiring due to the budget issues, we end up having uh, what are called traveler's nurses in the emergency room. And these are nurses that, as well, have no um, uh, uh, sense of, uh, of community. They, are, they move across the nation and, and just go wherever they, they up, you know, the money is <laughs> and, and the uh, temporary work is. Uh, I'm Sarah Larson. I'm a 2551 working at the Behavioral Health Services. I work with chronically mentally ill adults and um, you know the city just doesn't seem to want to spend money on their workforce. They have money to redecorate Potrero Avenue like four times in the last four years. They've got money to make things pretty but they don't have enough money for staff and we sincerely need security at our building. What's happening with security? Four hours a day. Well, Are you you feel for your safety? We have one security guard uh, at our front desk, but we have a bus stop right outside of our facility that is like a shooting gallery. It's People are out there doing drugs every single day, in the middle of the day, not in the evening. And, you know, we have residents that come and go. They're afraid to sit, to use the bus stop because of the chaos out there. We have a transitional program in the same building. And, and, and there's so many mentally ill people in San Francisco. Yes. Where are they? Are they just on the streets because they can't be taken care of? Well, the lucky few live at our facility, but... How many beds do you have? We have uh, about 150 beds. Not enough? No, no. But you know who would have enough beds? The old Laguna Honda. If the city was willing to pay for staff, it's a lot better than shelter. They keep talking about these transitional programs. Those are temporary. A shelter is not a home. A shelter is not a place to live. It's still a highly stressful situation for people, even so if they they're... they have not. space at Laguna Honda? 
Well, Laguna Honda is empty except for some administrative offices, and it's a you know it's over 1,200 bed facility that's just sitting empty. The old Laguna Honda, not the new one, and it was originally built as an almshouse, and I think it should be used for that again. It's one of the best and biggest assets of our city, and it's just sitting there empty, virtually empty. Yeah. Is your union are you concerned about outsourcing? of public services, I mean, temporary workers and that kind of thing? Yes, very much so, because when it gets outsourced, that's money that doesn't go into our retirement or health care. That's money that goes to people that don't live in the city necessarily, or they might be getting underpaid. What's wrong with having city workers work in city positions? Radical idea. Yeah. In 2019. Right. Now, is there an issue of bullying, workplace bullying here at the facility? Has there been? Yes, there have been many situations where bullying has occurred. What's, what's the cause of that? Well, we have difficulty meeting with management. They're very avoidant to uh, do any negotiating around this issue. This is union territory. I'm Gladys, Gladys Steinway. I've been off work for over my 10 months, and I just got back to work part-time, four hours a day, Monday through Friday. And you're, you're just running out of benefits, basically. You have no more benefits, and you come back to work, well, no workers comp, no nothing. I just don't understand the system right now. So you're, you're getting injured on the job and they're not taking care of you. They're saying there's no benefits. Where's all the money going? I, Insurance company. It was denied. Why do they deny it? What do they say? I don't know. We're going to court. <laughs> secret secret, uh, secret lawyers, secret doctors. Uh, you don't know who's, who it is. Was that uh, Maximus that denied it? Uh, workers' comp have denied it, yes. And is it happening to other people? Do you know other people who've had problems with workers' comp here at General Hospital? I, I don't, I don't, but it'll be interesting to find out the number or the percentage of people that are having these kind of problems and see what reality is. We are not getting the support we need. The overwork, people are stressed out, they're working too many jobs, is that contributing to workers' injuries? Absolutely, absolutely. I was working at a clinic way above uh, doing work way above my pay rate. I said, I'm a 1408. I shouldn't be doing high management when only getting pay and overwork and all underpaid by this, these places that we have here. Are they going to pay you back pay if you've been out of classification? Well, I've been off work for so long, I have no idea what's going on. So I uh, left a couple of messages to people to see where are we on that. But that was the hope when I left. When I got into an accident, that was the hope we were going. Just get back paid for what we did. Seems like it's a big battle here. It is, but we'll have to continue. My name is Judy Soro. I'm part of uh, 10 to 1. We're in arbitration right now with our union looking for livable wages for the folks that work here. Some of them have to work outrageous hours of overtime. Some of them are not being compensated properly for the work they do. You know, we have people in our union that are actually living in their cars and working two jobs. It's really disgraceful. So, to let, together and collectively, we're trying to change things. You know, there are a lot of billionaires in San Francisco. Yeah. Seems the city is rolling in the money. Where's yeah. the money going? It's all in city homes. We're going to get some. What do you think about the mayor's budget cut? 3% this year, 3% next year? No, it's bullshit. Excuse my language, but there's $3 billion in their bank and they need to start, you know, giving it to the city workers. If they want this city to look better, to remain a healthy city, they need to start paying the city workers properly. Are you understaffed here? Yes. Wow. Uh, they're understaffed and they're underpaid. I'm not, it's, I'm in another department, but I'm here supporting our brothers and sisters. It's the same problem throughout the yeah. city? Yeah. Is there, are you concerned about outsourcing of work? by the city? Oh, definitely. How Absolutely. is that happening? That's happening. That way they can give it people in without any consequence. They don't have to, you know, give them benefits or all the perks that you get if you're a permanent employee. You think there should be a ban on that by the city? Absolutely, because there's plenty of people here that can work 
and need to work and they don't need to outsource us. We need to stay together and stay strong on that. You can't survive. How is an outsourced worker going to do that at maybe 40, 50 percent less? They're not going to do it at all, unfortunately. The homeless, the homeless outsourced work? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm Jess. Jessica Gad. I work on the med surge unit here. I'm also a union rep. We're here to get what we need to provide safe, quality, and patient care. I mean, we work in the richest city in the world, it seems, and we can't get what we need to, to provide the resources that the people of the city need. So Why aren't you safe? I mean, it sounds like that's a basic issue, protecting the people who do the work. Exactly. We're understaffed. We are always working in critical conditions. Um, we're taking more patients than we need to. Um, you know, it's, it's always a battle, but we're always here for the people, so we do everything we can. How is it affecting patient care? I mean, they're not getting the quality time that they need for us to be in the room with them. You know, patients need to be turned every couple hours. They need to walk. They need to get bathed. How can we do that if we're, we're barely making it out there alive every day? How long do you work for the city? Seven years. Well, it seems like a lot of billionaires in San Francisco. The city is rolling in money. So they need to be able to allocate those funds to the city where people really need it. Are you concerned about outsourcing, privatization? Oh, well, you know, everyone knows that a lot of these companies are going public and um, there's a huge tax that's going to be on them. So where's that money going to go? And the city has been outsourcing hundreds of millions of dollars? Hundreds of millions. You know, people who are building the buildings in the city aren't even city workers. They're outsourcing to whoever and spending millions, like you said. I mean, there aren't even city workers building the city. So. And what, do you, what do you think the union should do about it? Should, think con should there be a contract, no outsourcing of work? I mean, that would be lovely. Give people the work for, you know, the city that they're working in. I mean, we all need jobs. We all, you know, give people who live here the opportunity to work in the city they live in. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Black employees are being targeted and lack enough time to do their work and do it correctly and being punished for it. Overall hostile work environment, extreme registry use, instead of hiring full-time permanent employees who are dedicated to our patients, work speed ups leading to med errors, some that are very serious. The people in the pharmacy are good people who care about our patients, but that's not enough, and they're not being listened to by their management. This must end. The discrimination must end. Our patients deserve better. Where is the accountability from the management of the pharmacy who knows this is going on and is doing nothing about it?
Can you introduce yourself? What's your name? Marilyn Mendoza. What kind of work do you do? I'm a nurse at BHC. What are your concerns here at this rally? It's a patient care, patient care and quality of care. And they don't have enough staffing? Not staffing, no, no. How does it affect patient care? Well, you know, we cannot attend all the services that we could do. And, you know, if it is lack of staffing, what can we do? And there's a lot of money in the city. Why isn't it going to proper staffing here? I don't know. I guess it goes to the, the bigger people. Okay, thanks. All right, we're going to get the Zuck off, right? Yeah. Let's get the Zuckerberg off. Okay, we're here. I just want to ask you a question. Mark Zuckerberg's Facebook, they stole more, more than a million emails. Um, I want you to, I want to ask you, how many emails from patients could you steal and still have a job? Zero! What would he's, happen? He's doing so much good here. Well, came up with all this. My feeling is we should, we should give him a chance to recognize the errors of his ways and to, you know, eat a little humble pie and come down off his little tower and realize that it's the city's hospital and he never should have asked for his name on it in the first place. If he did, people say there's mixed feelings about whether or not he actually you know, signed off on it. I think they put his name on it so they'll get more money but out. He doesn't want his name taken off, does he? Otherwise, uh, he would have told them. Oh, yet. I mean, I, I, it really... You've been to his house? You know, he has a mansion in San Francisco. I, I know he's got a mansion, and he's got $20 million in personal security paycheck a year to pay. Anyway... Maybe, maybe you need a visit. I, I would like him to have a chance to do the right thing before we put it on the ballot. You know, and save the city a lot of money by not having to go through a ballot initiative. And by personal polling of civilians, citizens of the city, not just workers, it's like 95% want it turned back to SF General, San Francisco General. In the People's Hospital. The People's Hospital, exactly. So I'm going to continue to kick the beehive as I can, okay? Union members who can keep this work going.